The old adage, never say never, as it pertains to WWE, gets truer with each passing year. It's something Vince McMahon lives by, because he knows that in this business, the ability to do business will almost always mean that beefs will get squashed, and people who were once persona non grata will be welcomed back with open arms. Bret Hart, Kurt Angle, CM Punk, Steve Austin, Bruno Sammartino, Ultimate Warrior, all massive stars and a major part of WWE history, all at one point thought to be on the outs, and yet they all came back in various roles, in spite of, in some of those cases, some serious bad blood between the parties. It takes a lot for a performer to either not be invited back into the fold, or not want to return for a payday or honour, and cases of wrestlers leaving WWE and disappearing forever are incredibly rare. But they do happen, someone like Macho Man Randy Savage being a prime example, and there are a couple of ex-WWE guys and gals who may also very well fall into that category. But who are they, and just what the hell happened to cause such irreparable animosity? Let's find out. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 former WWE stars who will never return. Join us. Number 10. Pack. Pack, wrestling as Neville, seem to be going places in WWE as the focal point of their revamped cruiserweight division. The self-professed king of the cruiserweights had returned from an injury layoff with a new look and attitude, and had notably improved several facets of his game, becoming a more well-defined character and exuding previously unseen confidence on the mic. But then he committed what is widely considered to be the biggest sin in the business, and it certainly is in Vince McMahon's eyes, and walked out prior to a Raw taping where he was scheduled to face Enzo Amore for the Cruiserweight title. The boss was reportedly livid over the indiscretion, but Neville's mind was made up. He wanted out, having been frustrated by a laundry list of things for some time. The man that Gravity forgot was forced to sit on the sidelines for almost a year while his contract issues were sorted, but returned for Dragon Gate before being announced as one of the first signees for AEW. And that's where the former NXT champion has been ever since. A return to WWE doesn't seem like since walking out is pretty much the kiss of death in Vince's eyes. And if it is ever going to happen, it'll probably take a lot of convincing from his former mentor, Triple H. For what it's worth, the man himself has never publicly commented on the circumstances surrounding his WWE departure. Number 9. Paul London Paul London is another talented, high-flying performer who left the company on bad terms. After years of plugging away on the indies and in Japan, the Texans signed with WWE in mid-2003 and worked for them for just over five years until he was released. In that time, he captured the Cruiserweight and Tag Team titles, enjoying a lengthy doubles reign with best mate Brian Kendrick on SmackDown. That was about as good as it got for him, since most of the time he was used as a low-card act or as someone to help enhance another performer that WWE had had bigger plans for. It was hardly a surprise when he was let go, but unlike some who wished to return to the company in the future, London wasn't too afraid to talk about his time there, warts and all. Not a week seemed to go by that he didn't shoot on his former colleagues or openly discuss the backstage politics that he endured. A lot of people put it down to typical bitter ex-WWE guy venting, but London has been remarkably consistent in his assessments ever since and has routinely said that he doesn't ever want to go back there. Given what he's said about them and his lowly status while working there, it's hard to see why WWE would want to bring him back either. Number 8. Sunny WWE's original blonde bombshell was Sonny, the flirtatious manager of teams like the Body Donners, Smoking Guns, and for a brief period, the Legion of Doom. As well as managing, she also worked as a television host, commentator, ring announcer, and whatever else WWE could do to get her on screen while she broke the hearts of a million teenagers during the 90s. AOL's most downloaded woman of 1996 was gone by July of 1998, however, with reliability and substance issues compounding a bad attitude and real-life problems. Since then, the tale of Tammy Lynn Sitch has been a sad one. She worked for ECW and WCW post-WWE, but when those companies went under, she and partner Chris Candido found themselves slumming it on the indies as they fought their demons. She appeared to have cleaned herself up and made appearances for WWE in 2007 and 
2009 and was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011. It's unlikely that she'll be back again, mind you, as her life has continued to spiral out of control since. With multiple stays in rehab and time spent in jail, not to mention her foray into the world of adult entertainment, inviting Sonny back in any capacity would simply be more trouble than it's worth. Number 7. Alberto Del Rio a veteran wrestler who has also dabbled in MMA, Del Rio eventually made it to WWE in 2010 and quickly established himself as a top-level performer. He won the WWE and World Heavyweight titles, but was fired after physically assaulting a WWE employee who made an off-color remark. He wasn't gone long, however, returning just over a year later as a surprise and beating John Cena to win the US title. Peaking on his first night back, his second spell wasn't much to write home about, and he requested his release after less than a year. Since going away in August 2016, he's worked all over the place, but has usually ended up in the headlines for the wrong reasons. His volatile relationship with Paige and a 2020 incident with another girlfriend that left him facing some very serious charges have meant that WWE, or anyone for that matter, will not go near him. Number 6. Ryback it's crazy to think about now, but Ryan Reeves was in the WWE system for over a decade before he decided he wanted to leave in August of 2016. Impressing during his time competing in 2004's Million Dollar Tough Enough, he earned himself a developmental deal despite not winning the contest. He bounced around the various training leagues for a while before getting his break on the first season of NXT The Game Show and, as a result, a spot as a member of the Nexus. Injury took him out of the group before he could really get going, and when he return later, he was completely transformed, squashing people a la Prime WCW Goldberg and dressed like he was going as Rob Van Dam for Halloween. It was a unique hybrid, and it got over, propelling the big guy up the card and landing him in the world title mix. He didn't win the big one, but did have a run with the Intercontinental title before leaving the company. Since then, he's been very open about his issues with WWE and the people who work there, and has also been engaged in a heated legal battle over the rights to his ring name, which reports reportedly set him back tens of thousands of dollars. Just listen to the Silverback talk for more than 30 seconds and it becomes apparent that his WWE days are well and truly done. Number 5. Gail Kim Gail Kim debuted in WWE at the wrong time, which sounds a bit silly when you consider that she won the vacant women's title in her first match, but it is the truth. Kim, someone who clearly had a lot of potential since she was athletic, young, and had a unique look, showed up in 2003 when the emphasis in the women's division was certainly not on the wrestling. This was the age of bra and panties matches and the diva search, and Kim was let go due to supposed cost-cutting after a little over one year on the roster. She resurfaced in TNA, which is where she showed everyone exactly what she was capable of in a series of jaw-dropping matches with Awesome Kong. She re-signed with WWE in late 2008, but her second spell was a massive disappointment, ending with her simply eliminating herself from a battle royal on Raw after she was instructed to get out of the ring within the first minute of the match. Gail has been on record since about how unhappy she was during her time with the company, even going so far as to accuse WWE of being institutionally racist. There have been countless opportunities for Kim to do something with them since her 2011 release, and nothing has ever happened, and almost certainly never will. Number 4. Mr. Kennedy what would you say if I told you that, and this seems absolutely mental with hindsight, some people believed that Mr. Kennedy at one time had the potential to be the next Stone Cold. Kennedy arrived on SmackDown in 2005 and caught the eye with his verbal skills, particularly his personal ring introduction, complete with microphone that descended from above. He talked the talk, but really didn't walk the walk. He had notable feuds with The Undertaker, Batista, and Shawn Michaels, but his run was continually interrupted by injuries, one of which necessitated he lose the Money in the Bank briefcase to Edge and surrender a potential WWE title opportunity. Once the prime candidate to be revealed as Mr. McMahon's storyline illegitimate son, Kennedy ended up as just another face in the crowd, a performer who would fail to live up to all that early promise. The straw that broke the camel's back was a back suplex that nearly broke Randy Orton's neck, the allegedly dangerous delivery of the routine move earning Ken his P45. It's been over a decade since then, and Kennedy hasn't done a single thing with the company. Number 3. Marty Jannetty 
Some wrestlers have been fired and rehired by WWE on multiple occasions. Marty Jannetty, however, holds the record, having been let go and brought back more times than anyone in history. His heyday was as one half of the Rockers with Shawn Michaels in the late 80s and early 90s, but even after HBK threw his head through a barbershop window, Party Marty hung around for a while, tagging with the likes of the 123 Kid and Leaf Cassidy. He was brought back in 2005 as part of the storyline between Michaels and Kurt Angle, and looked good enough to be offered a contract for his efforts. However, he was hired and fired multiple times over the next several years for various reasons, and to date, his last WWE match was against The Miz in 2009. In the years since, Janetti has been in the news for all the wrong reasons, usually related to his outlandish social media posts. Like, you know, that time he claimed he made a guy disappear. Marty was also one of the many former WWE stars who added their name to an ultimately dismissed class action lawsuit that was filed against Titan Sports. That, along with his age, physical condition, and erratic online behavior, make a WWE return almost impossible. Number 2. Ken Shamrock Ken Shamrock was a pioneer in the world of sports entertainment. Coming from mixed martial arts and having made his name in early day UFC, Shamrock took WWE by storm thanks to his manic intensity, novel style, and killer look. The world's most dangerous man incorporated strikes and submissions in a way that few had previously outside of Japan and quickly ascended the ranks, becoming an intercontinental and tag team champion as well as the king of the ring within just a couple of short years. His performances greatly improved over time too, and his feuds and matches against The Rock and Owen Hart are fondly remembered to this day. But before long, Kenny had the itch to return to UFC, where he knew he could make big money while not having to be on the road all the time, leaving WWE in late 1999 in order to step back into the octagon. His post-WWE fight and wrestling career was sketchy, and a WWE return was sometimes whispered about, but never came to fruition. Why? Well, apparently Shamrock's now ex-wife audited the company when he left there, and Vince McMahon was forced to cough up a load of unpaid royalties, something he was reluctant to do given the fact that Ken was no longer part of his locker room. It's been over two decades since that, but apparently a grudge is still harbored. Number 1. Scott Steiner this list has demonstrated that it's clearly not uncommon for disgruntled former WWE stars to badmouth their old employer. It's slightly less common for disgruntled former WWE stars to make terroristic threats to one of the industry's top stars and get themselves banned from their Hall of Fame ceremony. But Scott Steiner is a genetic freak, and he's certainly not normal. Since exiting WWE in 2004, the big bad booty daddy hasn't exactly been shy about airing his grievances and has frequently taken shots at Vince McMahon, Triple H, and, well, anybody who he perceives to have wronged him during his time working for them. A loose cannon at the best of times, Steiner deserves to be inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame either as a singles or with tag team partner brother Rick, but given the fact that he was previously barred from the ceremony and has called it a joke in interviews, going as far to say that the Hall of Fame only exists in Mr. McMahon's mind, I don't think he's anticipating an invitation anytime soon. Big Papa Pump has also discussed in the past how he turned down a Legends contract, claiming that it wasn't worth the paper it was printed on, and it's clear that he has no desire to work with the organization in any way ever again. And that is a tragedy, because if there's one thing that could rejuvenate Raw or SmackDown, it's handing Freakzilla a microphone.